unboxing for you. Uh, this just came in the mail, and this is from a uh, vendor that I have never ordered before. Uh, this is from C&B Miniatures, and they're out in Washington State, and they are the vendor that at past Historicons, maybe, maybe even other conventions, they're the supposed Eastern, the, uh, the Essex distributor for the United States. So they, uh, I've seen them sell their wares at Historicon, and um, it, it, on their website, uh, which is right there, uh, you can see that they have uh, all of the Essex uh, uh, miniatures listed, and um, it looks like they have a pretty comprehensive selection. Um, they don't have a very large selection of DBA 3.0 Army packs, but I am not a fan of buying those anyway, so I like the individual packs. So. Um, I'm actually not sure when I received this for time frame purposes. Um, I did order it last Friday and uh, it either came in the mail either this Friday or, or Saturday or today. Uh, I was out of town so I'm not sure exactly. So pretty quick service um, from them. Let's open up and show you what we got here and uh, you guys can follow along. C&B Miniatures. I'm hoping I got my whole order in, so. Um, this is something completely different that you are not gonna expect from me, so. Make sure you're sitting down. We have a Book One Army. What the hell am I doing with a Book One Army? Well, we'll see. Um, and it's actually Joe Coton's fault because he had some figures in his um, Third Dynasty of Ur, there were these figures in particular, which are Amorite Spearmen, and uh, let's take the lock off that. Let's see if we can, yeah, there we go. I really like the sculpting on these figures, and um, I'm like, well, what other armies can use these? And there's an entire army called the Amorites. And in particular, the later Amorites. It's book 115. And they have a very interesting army list. Um, and I will show you what that encompasses here shortly. So um, they have a light chariot general or a solid bow general, five units of fast blade, um, two units of solid ox or fast ox, two skirmisher stands or saloi and two solid hordes or fast ox or saloi so anyhow this is a cool army so here's the general and um we have a light chariot i have not done oh this is all bent bent to hell uh, i haven't done a chariot in a long time and i really enjoy doing them so um it's got a chariot guy on there and also the general who is doing his job of shooting arrows at folks. All right, we'll set this off to the side. Uh, the fast blade, it uh, should be 15 figures. These come eight figures to a pack, so I need 16. And these come with multiple poses. Um, they have some really cool sickle swords and they've got the shields already built into them. Um, looks like this is the, they got some sickle swords and also, yeah, here's, this guy's also has a sickle sword on there. So one, two, three poses. There's a same one there. I believe it's three different poses. And this is what will compose the fast blade stands is these guys here. Okay. Then we've got some we've got some bowmen here. Well, I'm not going to make a bow general. Um, they need to have some mobility. So uh, somebody asked me, do I build an army with all options? Well, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. In this case, I'm not interested in a bow general. These are going to be the Saloy uh, figures. Um, I guess I could make him, but I just don't see a situation where I would use him. So 
um, there's only one unit that is mounted with some mobility, so we want to keep that. These are, um, I guess I should read off what these codes are. Should... The fast blades are BS34A, the solid aux figures are BS34, the general that I picked is BS31. Uh, I think in the Essex Army Pack, they pick a different guy, but I wanted a guy that has uh, a helmet on because you've got some of the heavy troops, some of the solid ox that have helmets on, so why wouldn't the lead, main leader have one as well? Yeah, that's my reasoning. So, uh, And then these are BS36, the Bowman. And then we also have BS35. These are the figures that we're going to use as the fast auxilia. And I'm not sure if there's a multitude of poses in these guys. These may all be the same pose. Um, so yeah, that's these guys now here. Now, I did not order the horde figures because I have them from a long time ago. Uh, I have some uh, biblical hordes and um, and those guys are as well. So I've already had them for... Um, I actually have one other Book One Army, which is a, an Assyrian army. But I got them before I knew Mitch. And now Mitch has a Assyrians. So there's no big incentive to be doing that. But anyways, these are nice uh, figures from Essex. They've got... Um, they've been around a while, but they've got nice faces. And uh, they paint up really well. I particularly like these guys. Uh, I am going to put them probably with the shields. Um which is, you know, a separate thing. You can also build these as um, as not having the shields. But uh, these come eight figures to a pack. I need four solid uh, auxilia, so that'll consume all those. I'll have a few extra figures, but, you know, I don't worry about that kind of stuff. So, And, of course, um, this will be my first uh, Book 1 army whenever I get around to doing it. I'm pretty sure I will do these guys before I will do any other Book 1 army. So. But uh, I'm not sure when I'm going to get around to these, but... Um, I got half a mind just to break into them now, but no, no, we got to do the Pope now. So, uh, but this, see, these guys are uh, Book One Fifteen Later Amorites, and uh, they're aggression three if they're Assyrian or Babylonian. Otherwise, they're twos. So, and they have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten different enemies, and um, an arable army. So, anyhow, there we go. The Something unusual, you wouldn't normally see me with a book one army, but uh, anyhow, I, I really do like doing chariots. So I think I, pictures, I found some pictures of how I would paint these. Um, some shields with the cowhides, with some of the cowhide type patterns and, and that sort of thing. And uh, I do have one uh, Bronze Age army. Um, uh, my Chinese, my Qin Dynasty. Um, a lot of their weapons ended up being bronze, and uh, I did. A, I used a mixture of of the bronze here with some of like a standard metal. Uh, I mixed them together to kind of so you don't have a color that's this bronze, but somewhere in between. And I was really happy with that. So that's what these guys will have. All their uh, their weapons will be of that particular type. So anyhow, uh, all their bladed weapons and those kind of things. So. There you have it, another unboxing, book one. Thought you'd never see it. I know, it's still not painted, right? Okay, well, we'll see if we can move these guys up to Q so we can do something cool. Definitely a cool army. Five salt, five uh, fast blades, that's a, that's a good core of troops right there. So, um, And we could do battle with some of, uh, I think Mitch has eight or nine book one army. So he's, he's got a quite a fair number of them, So, but he doesn't have these guys, so. I got dibs on these guys, and uh, the really interesting thing about these guys is they are child sacrificers. So um, these guys are definitely going to be the bad guys on the field when they show up. So can't really take the side of uh, child sacrificers, but um, I got some good ideas for a camp. Try to get these guys into action a little sooner. Let's see, where are we? Middle. We should be able to get these guys done in 2021. How about that? Short goal, simple goal. Anyhow, until next time, don't forget to like and subscribe and uh, check out my other DBA stuff uh, that is on my channel. Until next time, see ya!